الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم الصراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب What? Good life Good life Yes So That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Nahal, Quran chapter 16, ayah 98, in terms of believers. When you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you do righteous deeds, and you are sincere, then you get the good life, which is the good behavior. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Amen. Inshallah ta'ala, send you prayer also. Yeah. Oh, Okay, brothers and sisters, mashallah, may Allah reward the sheikhs. This is amazing. I'm just taking notes from somewhere, inshallah, later on. Okay, um, we're going for salah now, and then we come and spend a few uh, minutes, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, before Isha, then you will be able to get the other part of it. That's the food, inshallah. <laughs> At least 10 times, instead of talking. That's the food. That's the food. That's the food. Okay, some of us were still talking, so let's make another, another more, ten more, so that everybody will be quiet and be part of it. Stop filming like ten times. MashaAllah, you have just finished praying. Salat, what salat is that? Mashallah. So each day, how many rakats you pay? Seventeen. So one year, how many rakats you think you have? You, you pay? One year. Uh, how many? Yes. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Hey. No, no, no. How many rakats? If 17 rakats per day, uh, uh, how many? Huh? No. Yes, you are wrong. <laughs> so, if you are 40 years old, if you are 40 years old, how many rakats have you performed? If you are 40 years, Four zero years. How many records have you performed? <coughs> huh? Two hundred and forty-eight thousand two hundred records. And if your behavior cannot change, for if your behavior cannot change by performing 248,200 records, it means it will not change again. Yes, because in the solar, then her and in fact, say, well, Munkar. Isn't it? So, if you pray, you are 40 years old, and you have performed 248,200 records, and your behavior could not change from negative to positive, and it means in press, yes, because you don't know how many more remain. Huh? Imam Anawi, who wrote a lot of books, have books. How many years? Just 46, and then he went. So let us try to make use of our age, inshallah. It is not how long you live, but what you leave behind you, the good things you leave behind.
ما شاء الله جزا الله شيخنا خير الجزاء مي الله سبحانه وتعالى ريوارد او شيخ ابوندنتلي ام ماي ديير بيلوف برادرز اند سيسترز ان ادين ويلكم تو ذا سيكند بارت اوف ذا سيشن تونايت ويز مي اس يو اول نو اي هاف ام الشيخ شيخ عبد الله او بيلوف برادر اند شيخ اند ذس مسجد ذات دوز ا لوت فور ذا كوميونيتي مي الله سبحانه وتعالى كونتينيو تو بليس هيم اند هيز فاميلي ام وي هاف اوف كورس اور هامبل شيخ شيخ دكتور فيصل بوادي Um, before I pass the mic to the humble Sheikh, I want to really commend my humble dearest beloved brothers and sisters for the decorum that we observed today, which is very, very important. And I will pass the mic to the humble Sheikh now to continue, inshallah, then we will come to the summary of the session tonight. May Allah reward you and grant you Al-Jannah. Bi ghayri hisabi ya kareem. Jazakum al To carry on from where I left, the Prophet says, Shall I not tell you about something that is better than the status of Siyam and Salat and Sadaqah? So we know Siyam, fasting, prayer, and Sadaqah, they're, they're all the, the pillars of the deen. The pillars of the deen. The Prophet ﷺ, shall I not show you better than that? But here when we talk about the Salat, this is the voluntary. Siyam, voluntary, and uh, Sadaqah is voluntary. But this doesn't negate with your salat that is obligatory and siyam that is obligatory, which is what coming up, uh, Ramadan is coming upon us. This fasting is obligatory, it's not voluntary. But you need to display in it a very good understanding of mannerism, of character, of well being, and thinking of the other, and sharing, and sacrificing, and helping, and cleaning, and not being wasteful. All these things, they're social mannerism. So, he said, verily, O Prophet, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Islahu bain. To make up, or to make what's between us good and healthy. فَإِنَّ فَسَادَ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ هِيَ الْحَالِقَ Verily, if what's between us is not good, verily, that's the halika. The halika means the one that shaves. They said, Ya Rasulullah, what's the halika? He said, Al-Muhlika. The, 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 the meaning of it is Muhlika, the, the destroyer. Because if we are in this place, or anywhere else for that matter, and the Muslims are there very dispersed, very, whatever Allah subhanahu wa has called us to in terms of being together, we're doing the opposite. We're being dispersed. Countries with country, uh, amongst themselves, tribes amongst themselves, ethnicities amongst in, in themselves, colors. And that's why Ramadan is an, exper it's an experiment and an ex experience for people to learn to sit with other people other than themselves. It's, if you're from Sierra Leone, sit with somebody who's from Somalia and eat with somebody who's from Morocco. And don't always eat cassava leaves. Open yourself <laughs> to other stuff. Yes. Always be open. Yes. <laughs> Whatever. Yes. It's not for no reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُ What does it mean لِتَعَارَفُ? To know one another and to learn from each other. <laughs> not everything from Sierra Leone is right. <laughs> and not everything from Morocco is right. <laughs> Take what's right from Morocco, Sierra Leone, Somalia, British, Inc., whatever. Thank we you. need to be open to other things. You can't be eating the same food all the time. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, inshallah. Okay, let's let's 
Before God's here, first of all. So all I'm saying is, Fasad, I mean, for us, and, and, and this happens, the reason why Ramadan is a very good experience, because you're going to be sitting with people that are not used to. And sometimes if you think yourself, you're in a high status, look, sit with somebody who's lower than you. And if you are educated, sit with somebody who's uneducated. If you are introvert, means you eat to yourself, sit with somebody who's extrovert. Mix. Don't just stick to whatever you know. Perhaps you will learn something. And this is a good lesson for people because whatever we think, everybody thinks they are on the right. Moroccans defend Morocco. Somalis defend Somalia. No. Defend what's right. And reject what's wrong, even if it's from your, your own thing. I mean, you have to be honest with yourself. And if your brother or your sister who's from your country or whatever, don't defend them if they're in the wrong. And follow the haq. Don't follow people. Follow the haq. So, because Ramadan is coming, inshallah, I'm going to say a little thing, a little bit about Ramadan. I was going to go over Surah Al Hujurat, but considering the circumstance, inshallah, I'm going to uh, stick to Ramadan because uh, there are many et etiquettes that are related to social mannerism to do with Ramadan. So, social mannerism and Ramadan is very important because in Ramadan you're going to have to learn what is what does it mean the meaning of brotherhood. What's, what's a brother? What's a sister? It's not a term you say, oh, salam alaikum brother, salam alaikum sister. Salam alaikum brother and sister, if that person puts your hand, his hand or her hand in your pocket and took your wallet, you should not say anything. That's a brother. Yeah, that's a brother. Why well, he's not your brother then? That's exactly what I'm saying. So the meaning of brotherhood should be understood. Yeah, so brotherhood is a term that is we, we, we just use, like me calling me Sheikh Abdullah, I'm not Sheikh, but even they like, Sheikh, they like to call me Sheikh, but anyway, I'll go with it. Same thing, brothers, brotherhood is a status. The Prophet said, He said, I wish that we have seen our brothers. The Sahaba, they, they thought, yeah, they said, oh Rasulullah, aren't we your brothers? He said, Antum Ashabi, you're my companions. But my brothers are those who are going to come at a later time. The Prophet is talking about us, the Muslims, we're not going to be. He hasn't seen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So brotherhood, for, for the person, the Prophet, the Prophet وسلم, to say, our brothers, that's a high status for you to be the brother of the Prophet That's a very high status. For the Prophet ﷺ to call somebody my brother, because brotherhood is a very thick thing in the Arabian Peninsula and alone in, in the old days. But now brothers they fight each other. They, I mean, if people, <coughs> now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Verily, inna al mu'minuna ikhwa," and this is in Surah Al Hujurat. I was going to go over it before. This ayah came. Verily, the believers are brothers. It came after what? After when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا When two groups amongst the believers fought, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا Make up between them. فَإِن بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى If one of them transgresses over the other one, against the other one, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْصِطُوا Make up between them with justice and be righteous. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى So he fought him, but he's your brother. He you just fought him with the sword. Or you corrected him. Or you said to him, brother or sister, that's haram, that's wrong. You should not supposed to do that. But he's your brother, regardless of your differences. Regardless to whether he corrected you or not. Regardless you're better than him. Well, he's better than you. Brotherhood is a status that not everybody reach. We call each other brothers and sisters. Salam alaikum sister. Salam alaikum brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Doesn't mean that. Brotherhood means a real brother. And the brotherhood of the deen sometimes can be stronger than the brotherhood of the blood. Yes. And it's meant to. 
But if you have a brother who's your brother in the deen and your brother in the blood, that's even better. But it seems that our children, they don't like each other. Look at your children. You find the brothers and sisters, they don't like each other. And I test again children. I said to them, why you like your friends but you don't like your brothers? Because they said they're annoying. <laughs> and I do that because I do, I do, I do experimentations on your children when it comes to the mother. So, so. Nah, inshallah, later you can ask this question. So brothers and sisters, they need to be, I mean, if you read the, the, the history of, of the Al-Hassan and Hussein, the grandchildren of the Prophet wasallam. You were very unlikely to see brothers in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, even in the pre-Islamic period in Arabia, the brothers don't get on with each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a very important ayah. Brother first. Wa ummihi wa abi. There's 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 a there's a nukta here, there's a lesson to be learned. Yom Allah says, the day when the brother will run away from his brother, then the, he said he will run away from his mother and his father. Wa ummihi wa abi. Yom wa yafirru al-mar'u min akhi, his brother. And this brotherhood can be a brotherhood of the deen. Because a brother in the deen can be better for you, or closer to you than your own parents. And we see this. Our children, they incline better to other people than they incline to you. You talk to them for hundred, for ten years, they will never listen to you. A stranger will come say, say, mashallah. So this is the nature of the human being. So we need to be aware of this thing. The etiquette of bravo, if we understand bravo, inshallah, I'm not going to go over this because it's lengthy. Maybe another time, inshallah. We need to learn the sitting arrangement, the sitting etiquette, the majalis. How do you sit? Where do you sit? How do, you, how do you sit with people? How do you arrange circles? And it's not for no reason that sitting arrangement is very important. And um, uh, talking etiquette. How do we talk? All this you find it in Surah Al-Hujurat. And then eating arrangement. Or eating etiquette. And this is where we're very lousy. Because when we're talking about eating arrangements, I'm just going to call out quickly just certain things that we need to learn. Because one thing we do bad in this center, and it's never wrong to criticize what you like because you make it better. And that's why gold, when it enters fire, it becomes purer. And the best criticism is the criticism of somebody who cares for you. Only the person who cares for you criticizes you. You criticize your children, you correct them, you discipline them because you want good for them. We are very wasteful in Ramadan. Wallahi al-Azim, being or considering the background we came from, Africa, people are dying of starvation. And we are throwing food in the bed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us for that. Allah will ask us for that. For us to be throwing food, nowhere where we came from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَلِكُمْ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ That's how you used to be. Every one of us should be, I'm not talking about British boys and British girls born here. You know what I mean? You had your bedroom before you were born. That's fine, but I'm talking about those who came here from nothing. And don't, I don't like people who said, oh, I was all right back home. <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. Many of us were poor back home. We did not have. So because we did not have, now be grateful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And many people, when Allah gives them, they think that they're good. That's a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالْخَيْرِ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna." We test you with what's wrong, evil, and with goodness. But don't, never underestimate and understand that because Allah has opened His favors upon you, has given you, and you got wealth and children, you think, well, Allah, mashallah, I'm doing all right. That's not a sign. That's not a sign that you're a good person. 
Allah can if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can afflict you with with wealth and he gives you so much wealth that you think mashallah I'm doing well and that we that that would be for you istidraj means you you're going towards destruction. Because the more you look at your bank account, the more money you have, the more children, the more wealthy you become, you think, Allah, I'm doing very well. Otherwise, Allah wouldn't have given me. No, Allah is giving you to test you. Always we see test as something wrong. You have to go to hospital, somebody dies, or you got a disease. No, when Allah gives you a lot of money, you have to stop and think. Oh, well, how come? Yeah, last year I had 200 pounds. This year I got 10,000 pounds. You have to stop and think. Where did, where, did, where did it come from? It can be a test. So we should not be wasteful because we came for, from where we didn't have. So the things we need to uh, look at is, is very important. The way we eat. And these are basic mannerisms. People will think, well, we know that. Yeah, you know it, but you don't do it. Very, very basic things. Very basic little things. Example, like for example, and this shows the character of the person. The way you eat shows who you are. It's the same as people who drive. You can tell a person's character from his driving. If you're driving, a, 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 a psychologist or sociologist can work out your, your behavior. He, he doesn't have to see you. Just he wants to see you driving. He can tell you what type of person you are. The same thing. You can tell what people are like in the way they eat. The way they dress. Sheikh Yusuf likes this term. I like it too. It's decorum. You have to keep a decorum. You know, you know what's a decorum? Means a look that goes, that looks nice. A decorum. People have, some people have decorum in their dress. Some people have their decorum in their, in their food. Some people have their decorum in the way they sit. Some people don't have a decorum. Some people they know how to match clothes. Like a green hat with green socks. Whatever, I mean, I'm just... You find a person... I, I mean, to be honest, yesterday I saw a woman, I saw a woman on Question Time, and she had green nail varnish. I'm seeing it with my wife, and I said, SubhanAllah, they, they, they look strange. I said, we're looking, why is she wearing green var nail varnish? Perhaps she's wearing something that goes with it. But the point is, here people, they go over extreme details about to look nice. The deen, that's our deen. That's our deen. We, the, the deen tells us how to look nice and to keep the decorum all the time. The way you walk, the way you sit, the way you eat, the way you sleep. The Prophet ﷺ, what's the etiquette of sleeping? What did the Prophet ﷺ say? When one of you goes to his bed, how, what, do, how do we, how, what did the Prophet ﷺ say? To, on the right hand side. What is the right hand side? And you, and you hand under your cheek. What position is this? This is a recovery position. When somebody faints, you put them in this position. Why? Because the heart is breathing, your breathing is perfect. When somebody faints, or you put them in a recovery position. What's the recovery position? They sleep like this. Yeah. And you put this hand like yeah. this, and you cross the legs. Yeah. That's the recovery position. <coughs> and you do it every night you go to bed. <coughs> well, that's if you know it. <laughs> now you know it. Because you sleep properly, you breathe properly, you don't have nightmares, you don't wake up scared, ah! <laughs> Especially when you eat cassava leaves. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just warning you, when you come to bed, sleep on your right hand side. But my children like, like it. it. My children. Uh, like my children. I, li I, li I like your friends. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, here is the, the things we need to pay attention to. Is for example saying Bismillah. You have to say Bismillah. Many people eat with your right hand. Eating from in front of you. Eating from in front of you. That's, that's, that's an order, that's an etiquette. You eat from what's in front of you. And the Prophet ﷺ told this to one of the Sahaba. He said, Ya Ghulam, old child, Sammillah, say Bismillah. Wa kul biyaminik. And eat with your right hand. Wa kul mimma yalik. And eat from what's in front of you. So if the meat is over there, don't jump to it. 
and that's the people and this is this is a reason this is an etiquette this is it shows that the, this deen had, has taught us everything the people who are dressing the plates make sure you put parts of the all the parts of the food in all sides of the plate for the person not to be um, this is another level we're not at that level yet but the person in the sunnah from the sunnah is to dress the table or the plate in a manner that I can have carrot here and he can have carrot on the other side so he doesn't have to jump to my side <laughs> but alhamdulillah we know we're not at that level yet but <laughs> Again, to be humble when you're sitting. You have to be humble the way you sit. Some people, they eat lying down like that. And it's prohibited. You have to eat, to sit, and keep space for your brother. And this is it. It's another thing. When there is crowd, when the place is crowded, you have to make space. I'm a bit squashed here, but it's alright. He's my brother. He's, my, he's squashing me, but he's my brother. It's alright. She's my sister. Alhamdulillah. Think like that. When you stand in the saf or in, in the, the row, don't think only of yourself. People always, and this is always what something I wanted to say. When somebody stands in the row, they always think what's in front of them. But he doesn't think of the person who's going to put his feet on his head. You have to think of that. Same as food. Sit in a manner that you can accommodate your brother. And the Prophet used to say, Leenu fi aidi ikhwanikum in the saf. If the, the, the prayer is, is if the line is squashed, is squashy, it doesn't matter. Let him. But if you have a problem with your heart, you will never let him squash you. Because you have an issue with him. The Prophet said, Let us sawunna sufufakum. Or in another narration bainakulubi. Verily, you will straighten your rows, or Allah will differ between your faces and differ between your hearts. Because I don't like Musa. So I will never pray next to him. But if I like him, it doesn't matter if he's squashing me. If I like this shaykh, Alhamdulillah, Shaykh Bawai, mashallah, I like him. He's alright, he's my brother, he's my sister. But if I don't like him, I'll never pray next to him. I won't ever let him touch me. And these are the diseases of the hearts we need to get over and to get rid of. Not to criticize food. When you eat, don't say it's salty, it's hot, it's this, whatever. Don't wow. criticize food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a sunnah to talk while you eat it. There's nothing wrong, but knowing. At least. Uh, no it's way. Salty. It's too much. If pepper is too much, no. I did not pay. Give you the money to cook. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, it's a sunnah to talk at uh, the Prophet, uh, even if you're talking about the price of food, because some people they don't talk. They said no talking during eat uh, eating, and that's wrong. When it's a sunnah to talk, but you have to have the etiquettes to know the etiquettes of talking. You don't talk with your mouth full. For the food, you don't spit it out. You don't pr eat with your hand. I mean, the sunnah is to eat with your hand. It is a sunnah. There is nothing wrong with a fork or spoon. But if the, for you to implement the sunnah of your hand, you have to eat as the sunnah says. You eat with three fingers. That's the sunnah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not my fault, sister. I'm not saying that. Right. <laughs> Let me just, okay, it's the sunnah is to, explain to no. you. The sunnah is to eat with three fingers. This is ah. how you eat. These three fingers. Ah. You eat like this. If you can't... Okay, one second. <laughs> <laughs> the ulama, the ulama, they, 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 the ajazu, they say it's, it's permissible for the person to eat with less, with more, with condition. Is that, there are certain things. For example, uh, a condition is... Uh, first, the hands have to be cleaned, have to be washed. Even though that's not from the, it's not from the deen, but it's from the urf, the mannerism. I mean, there is no proof that the person, yes, you wash your hands after the food, but there is no clear indication of a hadith that says you have to wash your hands, but you assume that your hands are clean. So, when you're eating with your hands, you, you don't put back what's left in your hand back in the plate. People do this, but they, they, and they wipe it on the edge of the thing. That's wrong. Yes. It's from the sunnah to lick your fingers, but after you finish food, not during food. 
So all these things you think we know them. No, we don't know them because we don't do them. You have to do them for you to know them, to implement them. And then, inshallah, two things and I will finish, bismillah. Uh, it, there are a lot of things, but the point I want to say is again to reduce the amount of food. Especially when we eat prior to Taraweeh. Wallahi al-Azim, you pray next to some people, they eat so much to the point where they come next to you, is burping throughout the Taraweeh. That's wrong. It's wrong. You cannot eat in that manner. I mean, if you really have to, one third for your food, one third for your drink, and one third for your air. You have to leave space in your stomach. You don't block it and stand for two hours and people complain, Tara, we had long. Of course. Because you eat, mashallah, you, you can't even breathe. And Maghrib and Taraweeh is very close now. By the time you eat, it's going to be Salat time. <laughs> oh, there's something to hold on, Allah. Allah, this is laughing, is a sign that this is serious. Because the ulama, they say, Sharrul baliyat yudhi. The worst of things makes you laugh. And this is Zirina Kanu Ikhwana Shayatin. Verily, the waste force are the brothers of the Shayatin. That's enough. We can't add anything to that. For you to be associated with the brotherhood of shaitan for being wasteful, then you should not waste food. And that's, that's Allah will ask us. Allah subhanahu what's the ayah that says, um, What surah is this? ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Then you'll be asked for the blessings that Allah has given you. Allah will ask you, what did you do with that rice? Why did you throw it in the bin? You might be thinking, oh, Allah will ask me that? The Salaf, they said that this man about, and I'll finish with this story, a man was walking on be, between some farms, like uh, uh, wheat farms. So he was walking in the way he found the Sumbula. Sumbula uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a wheat branch. It's a wheat branch. He picked it up, he chucked it on one side, one of the, 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 the lands that, that are plowed. So when he slept, he came to his brother in his dream, and we don't extrapolate the, the, the proofs from the dreams, but this is istitnas, you can use it. And he said that Allah, he said to him, What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do with you? He said, he asked me a question I never thought about it. He said to him, I was walking between the story I told you. I picked up that uh, wheat branch and I chucked it on one of the fields. So Allah said to him, why did you chuck it on that field? How did you know it belongs to that field? It's a wheat branch. And Allah said, more than that. Habba, a mustard seed. A mustard seed you will be asked about it. A mustard seed. Allah, when I thought about that, subhanAllah, the, the wrong we do, we'll be asked about every single thing. And I'll finish with this, inshallah. Poor people will enter Jannah half a day before rich people. Half a day. 500 years. وَإِنَّ يَوْمًا عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ كَأَلْفِ سَنَةٍ مِمَّا تَعُدُّونَ A day with your Lord is 1,000 years from your reckoning or counting. So poor people, we enter Jannah before Abdurrahman ibn Awf. He's one of the ten promised Jannah. And be, be, before uh, some other Sahaba. Not because they are better than Abdurrahman ibn Awf, an, but because Abdurrahman ibn Awf was a very, very, very rich person. He used to cut gold with a, with a, a, a pickaxe. That's how much gold he had. But a poor person will enter Jannah before him. Why? Because he doesn't have much to be asked about. Allah will ask you for every penny. So people will be standing there for a long time. So don't waste food. And I'm not going to go beyond this, inshallah. Subhanakallah. Wa bihamdik shadu wa lai la yastafirukutubah. ما شاء الله ما شاء الله تكبير جزاء الله شيخنا خير الجزاء أنكلم إن شاء الله. May Allah subhanahu wa taala reward our humble sheikh.
Sheikh Abdullah um, abundantly and grants him and his family and all of us al Jannah be ready he said. My dear brothers and sisters, just to draw within a minute to give you the summary of this. Um, the Sheikh talked about social mannerism. This is very, very important. And as we all know, the Rasulullah Sallam was sent to perfect our character. The whole deen is character. But before I give you the rundown, I want just to urge, advise, and also warn the people who bring their children to the masjid. If you bring your child, and your child is 11, beyond, or 12, they must sit for the lecture. They must not be downstairs playing. There are big boys down there who know things that some of us don't know. I tell you the truth. They can teach you what you don't know. But we we'll bring them to the masjid is good, alhamdulillah. But when we bring them, we don't encourage them to sit with us. Look how beautiful some of the children are sitting here with their fathers and mothers. So please, we urge each and every one of us when we bring our children. If they are below 10 or 10, khalas, we have activities for them downstairs. But beyond that, please, please, you have to make sure they stay in the, in the class, in the hall. If the hall is full, then we get them where they're going to sit to listen to the lectures. Please, may Allah reward you. And the Sheikh, and of course Sheikh Body, which reads on that, that the essence of this deen life and the deen is to understand the importance of Tawheed. The oneness of Allah, that Tawheed is very, very important. And may Allah reward Sheikh Abdullah, he talks about the involvement um, of the youth, the young, the adults. Bring them. You meet a brother, a sister out there, call the sister. Come, let's go. Imagine if one is guided because of you. Maybe because of that sister or brother you brought to the masjid, that's the only means you have to enter Al Jannah. You never know. So please make use of it. Some brothers and sisters, trust me, I don't mean anyone. If they send these lectures to you, you don't forward lectures. In fact, you forward the photos they give to you or about other people and everything. You forward them to others, but you don't forward to brothers and sisters the words of Allah. You know, even some groups they will tell you don't send Islam here. It's true. Why did you join them? Yeah, there are some groups I tell you, you know, they tell you you must not send Islamic message here. Then why did you join it? Are you part of them? If you're not part of them, then exit. But if you're part of them, then you'll be raised your Malqiyama amongst them. That's what the Rasul said. And um, the Sheikh talked about learning. It's not too late for us to learn. You are not too old to learn, neither you are too young to learn. Alhamdulillah, Sundays we are here, Fridays we are here. You can see Sunday, Sheikh Abdullah has the other sisters here. I have the sisters here, mothers, and then Sheikh Badi have the youth and etc. All of them, Sheikh Bimba, come, everybody, come and learn. Stop sleeping too much and snowing on Sundays. Please. Come, come to learn. And if you know better, come and help as well. We need volunteers. We need brothers and sisters who can volunteer. But the fathers, they come, they bring their children, and the fathers, they don't stay with them, some of them. I'm not saying you should not stay. But the mothers, to be honest with you, they do a lot. The women, they do a lot in the masjid. Alhamdulillah. So please, I'm not accusing you, but we need your help. We need your support. Maybe it's just sitting by the side, looking at your children, they will behave. These teachers, they are going through terrible time. But you don't know, it's a war. <laughs> now, they, shake, they talked about, as well, you cannot defend if you are not a good defender. Did you see Shekhbadi playing football? Never. Yes. Ah, you never see him? Allahu Akbar. When he defends, everything goes. You the attacker, everyone. So he, he will not defend if not a good defender. So in other words, you cannot defend someone who comes to you with a neg negative attitude if you don't have knowledge. You don't understand what you're doing, what you're practicing. The Sheikh mentioned that if someone said to you, Islam is a terrorist religion, what would your reaction be? Say you, who dare, dare you say that? No. Teach the person. Tell them to understand. Right? May Allah make it easier for us. And um, the Sheikh talks about this, um, is it SRE? Is it? SRE. 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 That they want to introduce in the school. I believe most of us receive messages. The fact remains here, the Sheikh is not telling you 
that okay, they're going to teach them everything is good and etc. All he's saying, if you don't teach them the good thing, then they will earn the bad out there. And you can see the child, the age they're going to teach that child things that they should not be doing. But why? Because we do not do our homework. So therefore, please, Alhamdulillah, there are avenues that you can challenge that, you can withdraw your child from that, and etc. But make sure you go through the procedures of the dean to teach them. This is very important. Imagine a child who is that age, they're telling you this gig and etc. It's just unbelievable. But Alhamdulillah, had a dean of him. dinukum. Khalas, that's their own team. So do your homework, do your own work. And finally, the Sheikh was talking about solutions with Sheikh Bwali and the Bush Sheikh they came upon as well is knowledge to understand this deen, to implement it. You don't just learn, you don't implement it. It talks about something which is very, very important, that brotherhood. Look, you know, amazingly, look how beautiful we look. Look, you can see the old, the young, and the, you wouldn't even know the rich, the knowledgeable, anyone amongst us. Look, we are all brothers and sisters, and we'll be coming the al Qiyamah, right? Like that, bi idnillah. But let's love one another. Let's clean our hearts. Please, clean your heart. You know, when you go and sleep, what happened? If you have something in your heart, you, you sleep with what? Headache. Headache. And stress, yeah. And the one that you're think, thinking about, he's there snowing. I check what it says. Right? So please, let's love one another and forgive. Ramadan is coming. If you don't forgive, why, how do you want Allah to forgive you? You forgive now, right now, for the sake of Allah, then Allah will forgive you. And then, okay. Yeah, I think this, this is the whole thing that we've um, talked about today. And, uh -huh, and the Sheikh went, so, mashallah, kasavalif. I know, Fatu boy, make sure now you do this. No, not the cassava leaf. The Sheikh love. Um, no, not Tula. He doesn't like Tula. No, 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 no. I like the boy knows what he loves. No, 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 no. Why are you rushing? Granite soup. Inshallah. Yeah? The most important thing, what the Sheikh is trying to say here, is to make sure we accept everyone's culture. As long as the culture does not contradict the deen, we accept everyone. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you have. We are all brothers and sisters. Okay? Alhamdulillah. When you make couscous, make sure you make rufufu for me. That's all. Um, yeah. So we come to the end of the session. I can see the cameraman has been putting his hand since long. Only you we're going to allow a quick one. Then I go to check while you will finish. Now. Yeah. Thanks very much. May Allah reward you. Our sheikhs. I'm sorry yeah. to disturb you so much. No, no worry. Um, the topic today is interesting, but again, it's one thing. You see, there is something wrong here about defending Islam. In a society where we live, it's very good to know how to defend Islam. This past week, it was unfortunate for me that there was a video we are in I don't know the country but it's claimed that the country is a Muslim country they hold a black man tied his mouth yes. he was sitting on a chair tied him on the chair and somebody took something like plastic rubber I don't know whether it is or not Whipping that man, hitting that man on all areas, mm -hmm. people were there around. Mm. He continued to hit him. Everybody looking. In the end, he pushed the man. The man fell at his back. And still, he continued to hit him everywhere. It was so interesting that. I people know a little bit, not much. They sent so many of this to me. Many, many people sending me. Some people who are not even Muslims, some are Muslims. They said to me, How can you, what will you say about this? What will you say about this? And that was so interesting. 
But again, I looked at the pictures. But I cannot make any decision at the moment. And I cannot say what I decided. So I threw everything onto you people to enlighten <laughs> us today. Thank you. Oh, Lord, Lord. 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 You know what is amazing? You know what is amazing? Yes. The amazing thing is, I don't know what the other checks, but I believe Alan was best. That's maybe only one or none of us have watched this video. May I if you want, I can give it to you. No, no, don't, don't worry. No, I'm talking about the table, the high table. I don't know. No, come here. The Sheikh throw this to us. And I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Maybe one. But no, I'm talking about the high table, brother. He's an African worker. No, no, no. I'm not going to that. Just wait. All I'm saying is, we're talking about knowledge. And you know what? There is something which is very, very important. مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلُ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Whatever we say here, whatever you utter, Sheikh Badi, the other time, I mentioned that to you. Whenever khutbah comes, he doesn't want. If it's salah, no, you go. When we sat there, he said sometimes, he said some of the sheikhs, they think they go to preach to people. They don't know that they are preaching to themselves. Because at the end of the day, whatever word, every single word you say there, I say here, I will be accountable for it to you, Malakiyam. So I will not allow anyone to put a big load, whatever, on my head. <laughs> you carry your load, you carry it. All I'm saying, if you're throwing that one to us, I don't know the sheikh, but I'm saying, I haven't watched the video, and I have nothing to say towards that. I have nothing at all. Different. So maybe if the sheikhs, they want to say something about that, well, alhamdulillah. But I have no clue, and I don't think they have clue. <laughs> Just to make it quick to the brothers and sisters, this is a difficult time for us, the Muslims, what the whole world and the Muslims are going through. We are so quick to react in such a video, and we're forgetting about other brothers who have been bombed and killed in other parts of the world. And I feel so sad. In this sense, when Muslims receive these things, they will forgot to follow the word of Allah SWT, where he says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, O you who believe, in ja'akum fasi kubina bayi. If an uh, evil liver brings you a news, fatabayanu, you have to investigate. We live in a technological uh, world, so the technology is so advanced that we can able to create anything yeah. and send it out there. Mm -hmm. The enemies of Islam are out there using this as an excuse. It doesn't matter whether it happens in a Muslim country or non-Muslim country. Wicked people are wicked, bad people are bad people. So don't think because it's a black man, I am a black man, so I'll be so rich and, and thinking that Allah will not judge those people. Let us leave it in the hands of Allah SWT. We are not there. We don't know what happened. We don't know what reason is for. This thing is really going to crazy into the, the, the minds of the Muslims and the heads of the Muslims. And some of them, this is for you to leave your thing because they will, you continue to see things that you will not like. And sometimes you relate to Muslims. But who says that being a Muslim makes you a perfect person? It's only to, for you to follow the Kitab and Sunnah. That will make you do the right thing. You can't be a Muslim, you can be a thief, you can be a, a, a murderer, you can be anything. So please, brothers and sisters, when we are sharing these videos or watching these videos, we should be very cautious and careful the way we are making our judgment about things. That's all I'm going to say to you, brothers and sisters. Jazakum um, uh, uh, Inshallah, it's, it's in the point where Sheikh Musa said that that's, that's enough. But I want to add something simple to it, which is... Imagine, imagine what we spoke about today. If you go on pack and you go and see, investigate this case, does it exempt you from learning and teaching your children and knowing your deen? It does not. That's not an excuse. Don't mix this with that. This is here. That is another thing. Does that thing has its own people? But that that case should not divert you or distract you from doing your priority. Allah will ask you by your salat, 
and your children, Allah may not ask you about that person. Because the Prophet said, Kullukum ra' wa kullukum mas'ul an ra'iyati. All of you are shepherds and responsible and you'll be asked for what you have under you. That's beyond your, that's beyond your ability. Allah will ask you what's under your hand. Your wife, your children, your knowledge, your deen, your salat. When you have answers for this, don't worry about the other one. If you, if you cover these and then you have time to look up to, to that, see to that, see to it. But if you don't have time to cover these things, don't worry about that stuff. Worry, be sad, say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. But don't divert yourself to what Allah will ask you about, to what Allah may not ask you about. Allahu Akbar. Well, you are coming to the end of the program. Your last final word of the speaking in front of you, and I should not forget that Islam is not what somebody is doing. Islam is what he's saying here in this book. That's why Professor Hassan has said, "I left with you how many things?" Did he said, "I left how many people with you?" What did he say? Two. What, what are those two? Uh -huh. And what happened to it? Huh? He said, if you follow these two, you will never what? Go astray. That is it. So, you should not uh, define Islam about what a certain Muslim is doing. No. At all. You should define Islam, what Allah is saying here, and what Prophet also had said or exemplified in his life. That is Islam. Apart from that, that's not Islam. You can see a Muslim, sometimes I'm walking, and then I see someone, he comes to me, oh, Salaamu Alaikum. I say, he has. What? Alcohol. Alcohol. Drinking. All his eyes, he does not even know. I said, I just look at him and say, he said, oh, I'm too, I am Muslim. I'm from Somalia. I'm this. So if somebody sees that one, he says, oh, that is Islam? No. You do not look at what somebody is doing. Okay? Yeah. Don't look at that. But look at what you are doing and what is going on. Yeah. It is like the bird. And it is baby and the hunter. When the hunter got one of them and he was what? Slaughtering. Slaughtering it. The hunter started to cry. He was crying, he was crying. And then the baby, the another baby, he said, Oh mama, look, this man is so merciful. Look, he's he's what? He's crying. He said, Ya Bune, La Tanzur Illa Dumu'i. Don't look at his what? Unakin Uzur Illa Matas no Yada. But look at what his hand is what? He's doing. That's what you have to look at. Okay? So don't look at what somebody is doing and so forth. And then you said, Oh, I, oh I'm no more a Muslim. Oh, I don't, I don't even feel to be a Muslim. Uh, what, what do you mean you don't feel to be a Muslim? Allah said, it seems you have already said here, Allah has said, whether you believe in Allah, all of us, or not, it will not increase his kingdom, nor decrease it, in any way. He said, if he wants, what did he say today? He will what? Wipe all of us. And bring another one. Because he is what? At the end of the. Uh, uh, he said what? He is Al Aziz. Yeah. Yes, that is it. So don't look at what this way and so on and so forth. All what you have to do is to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and protect everyone and bring peace, peace in life. So I want it. MashaAllah, thank you so much. May Allah reward all of you. Keep smiling. We'll love you all for the sake of Allah. And please do this as we are living. As we are living, please don't do this. As we are living, look at your brother by your side and look at your sister by your side and give them a hug. Tell them that you love them for the sake of Allah. <laughs> love you for the sake. Do that.
Hug each other for the sake of Allah. Hug each other for the sake of Allah. <laughs> That's good. That's what we call love. For you to fast, the fasting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala wants wanted us to fast. I'll stop here till we come back, inshaAllah. Subhanakallah, Muhammad Shallah, and that's the Firkot of Zakmullah.